Hello again, everybody. Here we are in section 1.2 of the trig book. We're going to be looking mostly at uh, similar triangles in this lesson. But first, let's talk about vertical angles. Now, you may remember this from high school geometry. Vertical angles have equal measures. And in this diagram, you take any two lines that cross each other, you're going to get two sets of vertical angles. Uh, M and this angle QMR are equal. So NMP and QMR are forming equal angles here. But there's another set of equal angles. Angle QMN is also equal to angle RMP. So these two in red are also equal to each other. If we have parallel lines and a transversal that cuts across the two parallel lines, then we get lots of uh, relationships here. We can talk about alternate interior angles. Now, alternate meaning that they're on different sides of the transversal, and interior meaning that they're between the two parallel lines. So you can see here angle 4 and angle 5 is one example of alternate interior angles. If we called this angle 3 and 6, these would also be another pair of alternate interior angles. So 4 and 5 are going to be equal to each other. 3 and 6 would be equal to each other. We can also get alternate exterior angles. Exterior meaning that they're uh, not between the parallel lines, but they're outside. So for example, angle 1 and angle 8 are alternate exterior angles, so they are equal. And we could have here angle 2 and angle 7 that would also be alternate exterior. And alternate exterior angles are always equal. If we talk about interior angles of the same side of the transversal, like angle 4 and angle 6 here, then they're not equal, obviously, but they are supplementary. Now, this makes sense because... If we have, you know, if you look at this straight angle here, then uh, you could say f angle 4 and this angle in this position would be supplementary. But this angle is equal to angle 6. So if this angle and 4 are supplementary, then 4 and 6 also have to be supplementary. And then we can talk about corresponding angles, which are angles that are in the same position, but they're on different parallel lines. Uh, so like angle 2 and angle 6 are corresponding and they are equal. Uh, we could also have another pair of corresponding angles here. We could have angle 1 and angle 5 that would be corresponding to each other and therefore they would be equal. So in example 1, our job is to find the measures of angles 1, 2, 3, and 4. If we're given that angle 1 is 3x plus 2, and angle 4 is 5x minus 40. Now we know that angle 1 and angle 4 are alternate exterior angles, so we can say that the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 4. And the measure of angle 1 is 3x plus 2, and so that's got to be equal to 5x minus 40. Now this is a little linear equation I'm sure you can solve. Just subtract 3x from both sides and then add 40 to both sides. So we get 42 equals 2x, or in other words, x equals 21. Now, of course, 21 is not the answer, but it's going to lead us to the answer. If we now use the 21 in place of the x, 3 times 21 plus 2 is 65. Or we could have also used the 5x minus 40. They both should give the same answer, right, because they're equal. So now we know that angle 1 and angle 4 are 65 degrees. So if we now take that uh, knowledge and apply it to angle 2 and angle 3, we know that angle 1 plus angle 2 has to make 180 degrees. In other words, they're supplementary. So I can take my 65 degrees plus Angle 2 has to equal 180, or in other words, 180 minus 65 has to equal 115. So angle 2 is 115. And then we know that um, 
1 and 3 are vertical angles, so they will be equal. So angle 3 is 65 degrees, and that finishes up everything they asked us to find. Now we come to the angle sum of a triangle property. The sum of the measures of the angles of any triangle is 180 degrees. In other words, it doesn't matter what kind of triangle it is, we always know that the three angles will add up to 180. So let's look at an example. It says the measures of two of the angles of a triangle are 48 degrees and 61 degrees. Find the measure of the third angle X. So we know that those three angles added together must add up to 180. That means that the missing angle equals 180 minus the other two that we know. So the missing angle is 71. And now let's talk about types of triangles. We can classify angles either by their sides or by their angles. Here we've got angles. So if all three angles in a triangle are less than 90 degrees, we call that an acute triangle. If one of the angles is exactly 90 degrees, we call that a right triangle. Now you know if, if the three angles must add up to 180, we could not have two right angles because 90 plus 90 is 180 right there, um, and we wouldn't have anything left over for the third angle. But if we have one right angle, we call that a right triangle. If we have one obtuse angle, we call that an obtuse triangle. Two of the angles in our triangle will always be acute, and it's the third angle that, de that determines what kind of triangle we have. Now if we look at it by sides, if all three sides are the same, we call that equilateral. You know, lateral means sides, so equilateral means equal sides. If, the two, if only two sides are equal and the third one is different, we call that isosceles. If all three sides are different from each other, we call that scalene. Now let's talk about similar triangles. It says for triangle ABC to be similar to triangle DEF, then we must have corresponding angles must have the same measure and corresponding sides must be proportional. So um, really what we can boil this down to is if we have two triangles whose angles are the same, then we can say that the triangles are similar and the sides must be proportional. Let's take a look at example three. It says in the figure triangles ABC and NMP are similar. Find the measures of angles B and C. Now, if it tells us that they're similar, then we can conclude that the measures of the corresponding angles are equal. That means that the measure of angle B has got to be equal to the measure of angle M because notice that you know A is going to correspond to N, B is going to correspond to M, C is going to correspond to P. So angle B corresponds to angle M. That means if M is 31, B is 31. And then angle C is going to correspond to angle P. So if, if P is 104, C is 104. And that's all we needed to figure out. And for the second part, given that triangle ABC and DFE are similar, find the lengths of the unknown sides. Now remember we said that the sides have to be proportional. So sometimes you can just look at it and do it by common sense. For example, I can say, okay, if, these, if this triangle is similar to this one, then the angles are equal and the sides are proportional. And look at side DE. It's half the size of, of side AC. So, you know, these are corresponding. Cause I have angle D equals angle A, angle E equals angle C. Therefore, this side has to be proportional to that side. So this side is twice as big as that one. That means the other two, um, this side has to be twice as big as this one. So I'm going to end up with side EF equals 16. And for this one, uh, AB is 24, so DF is going to be 12. And sometimes you can use common sense to do it like that. 
but let's do it officially and write it out in fractions. The similar triangles, remember, states that the corresponding sides are proportional. So what I can do is, if common sense won't help, I can make a ratio out of any two sides that I know. And the ratio that I make from these two sides has to be equal to a ratio from the corresponding sides in the other triangle. I would encourage you to, whenever you're making your ratios, put an unknown in the top because if your unknown's in the bottom, it makes you have an extra step. So I always try to put an unknown in the top. And so let's start off with the fraction DF over 8. Now if I make a fraction out of this side over 8, I'm going to have to make the same fraction over here, 24 over 16. And now I can solve this for side DF. I can multiply both sides by 8. And DF equals 8 times 24 over 16. DF equals 12. And remember we said a while ago that uh, side DF would have to be half of 24. So no surprise. And then let's do the same thing for the other unknown side. Let's do EF over 8. That means my fraction for the other triangle is going to be 32 over 16. Multiply both sides by 8, and we get side EF equals 16. Okay, now I've picked out number 18 on page 51 of your book, and we're going to find the unknown lengths of um, the sides of this triangle. And so I know all three sides on the smaller triangle, and if I know these two triangles are similar, then I can use uh, equal fractions, you know, ratios, like we did in the last one to find these two missing sides. So... Let's start out. Remember, we keep our unknown in the top. So I'm just going to make a fraction out of A and the side that I know. So A over 25. And I need to make the same fraction from this triangle. So it would be 8 over 10. Multiply both sides by 25. And side A equals 20. And let's do the same thing for side B. Uh, we'll say B over 25. And then if I use B and 25, then from the other triangle, I need to use 6 and 10. Multiply both sides by 25. Side B equals 15. All right, so now let's think about it. Um, 10 times 2 and a half is 25. So 6 times 2 and a half is 15. And 8 times 2 and a half is 20. So, you know, it has to be times 2 and a half on every one of them. It, the the other triangle has to be times the same number for each side. Now let's look at example 5 from the textbook. It says workers at the Morganza Spillway Station need to measure the height of the, flag, the station flagpole. They find that at the instant when the shadow of the station is 18 meters long, the shadow of the flagpole is 99 feet long. The station is known to be 10 meters high. Find the, the height of the flagpole. Now, it doesn't matter that um, the station numbers are measured in meters and the flagpole numbers are measured in feet. You know, just the same way when you look at a map, you really don't have to worry about whether the map was drawn in inches or centimeters or, or what. Because it doesn't matter, you know that um, if you double the length on the map, you double it in the real world, whether your map is measured in inches or whatever. So it doesn't matter here. As long as both of these are the same measurement, the same unit of measure, and we know that for our flagpole, both of these numbers are going to have the same unit of measure. So when we find the height of our flagpole, it will be in feet because the 99-foot-long shadow was measured in feet. Right now, if I call the missing side H, then um, I can make a fraction from this triangle, H over 99. Remember, we always keep the unknown on top for convenience. And then the corresponding fraction from the other triangle would be 10 over 18. 
multiply both sides by 99 and h equals 55 feet okay it has to be feet now let's look at number uh, 65 from page 18 of your textbook it says find the length of side C but they don't tell us that these two triangles are similar so we have to figure out for ourselves if they are similar because if we can't prove that they're similar we can't be writing fractions and assuming that the fractions are equal so um, what I usually do when I have two uh, triangles that are kind of on top of each other like this I would draw them separately to help me visualize what's really going on now here are my two triangles um, so we've got if we if we take the uh, small one on the right side we can say the horizontal side is 90 and the hypotenuse is 100 and they didn't draw it on the original diagram but it's pretty safe for us to assume that those are 90 degree angles and I have them drawn 90 degree angles here so this is 90 and 100 and now if you look at the other triangle the large triangle the horizontal side is 10 plus 90 and the hypotenuse is C okay now um, this angle here since these two triangles share this angle um, we know that those two angles are equal and if you go back to the original triangle if these two are parallel then these two angles here are equal and so these two angles are equal to each other because those would be what corresponding angles remember from the last I think we saw that earlier um, these would be corresponding angles so we can say that there now if we know that all three angles are the same then we know that the two triangles are similar and we can write fractions and say that the fractions are equal so if I start with my triangle that contains the unknown and I say C over 10 plus 90 then I can say that's equal to 100 over 90 and now 90 plus 10 is 100 multiply both sides by 100 and C equals approximately 111 I had to round off there um, that's it's not exactly 111 but it is approximately 111 